Good evening. My name is Corina Tupezak. Nine years ago, the dream of a lifetime came true for me when I was crowned Miss Universe. That year, I represented Greece, my native country, and I have always been very proud to have been chosen first Miss Greece and then Miss Universe. Tonight, another dream came true for me when the Miss Universe beauty pageant came to my country. And I'm very happy to welcome 61 beautiful girls from six continents to my own homeland. I'm very happy to welcome you too to watch the Miss Universe beauty pageant of 1973 in Greece. Right from the ancient theater of Herod Atticus in Athens, Greece, the 1973 Miss Universe beauty pageant. Your hostess with the beautiful Miss Helen O'Connell. And one of America's favorite television personalities, Mr. Bob Bucker. It is brought to you by Bowl, with new cleaning energy for your bowl wash. Liquid helps keep hands young looking. And by Crest, the cavity fighter. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Mr. Bob Bucker. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, or as they say in this beautiful country, Kalisperisas Kyrias Kekiri. For the first time in its 22-year history, the Miss Universe beauty pageant is originating on the continent of Europe, in the country of Greece, in the city of Athens, and in this 2,000-year-old theater of Herod Atticus. We're at the foot of the Acropolis. Right above us here is one of the great monuments on Earth, the Parthenon. And in these magnificent surroundings, the pageant takes on a totally new aspect. Beautiful young ladies from 61 lands competing in one of the most majestic and historic settings. Yes, tonight you're going to see a pageant of beauty in every sense of the word. And before the evening is over, one of our beautiful delegates will exchange the title bestowed upon her by her own country for the title of Miss Universe. And in the few seconds it takes to announce her name, she'll become one of the most talked about, one of the most photographed, and one of the most famous of all international celebrities. It could be any girl in the pageant, because at this moment, not even the semifinalists have been chosen. But whoever she is, she'll be known wherever she goes as the most beautiful girl in the universe. And this background seems particularly appropriate to the splendor and excitement of the pageant. 
Before the actual competition begins, I'd like to present the reigning Miss Universe, a beautiful young lady from Australia who is completing the most memorable year of her life. Here is Miss Universe of 1972, Carrie Ann Wells. <laughs> And now, it's time for the final judging to begin. With a traditional parade of nations, as each girl is introduced, she'll turn in her ballot for Miss Unity, the title the contestants themselves award to the delegate they consider to be the most friendly and popular in the pageant. After you've met all 61 of the contestants, I'll announce the winner of the Miss Unity Award. So let's welcome all of the beautiful delegates in this 22nd annual pageant, as we present the 1973 Miss Universe Parade of Nations, Miss Argentina. Miss Aruba. Miss Australia. Miss Austria. Miss Belgium. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Christian de Bist and I come from Antwerp. Miss Bermuda. Hello, everyone. My name is Judy Richards, and I am from Bermuda. Thank you. Miss Bolivia. Kalispera sar emunosome, Roxana Titich Harp, Erhome Apoto La Paz Tin Bolivia, Evaristo Parapoli. Miss Brazil. Greece. I am Sandra Mara and I come from Sorocaba, state of Sao Paulo, my country is Brazil. Miss Dominion of Canada. Good evening, my name is Deborah Ducharme from Port Coburn, Ontario. Miss Ceylon. Miss Chile. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Janet Robertson. I come from the Gallery Miss Colombia. Good evening. My name is Ana Lucia Gudelo. Vengo desde Cali, Esgaristo. Miss Costa Rica. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rosie. I come from San Jose. Miss Curacao. Good evening. I made this finish. Ingeborg Zielinski. This is Perno Keritismus Apoto Curacao. Welcome to Curacao. Miss Cyprus. Miss Denmark. <laughs> Miss Dominican Republic. Muy buenas noches. Mi nombre es Lili Fernando y vengo de Santo Domingo. Miss El Salvador. Buenas noches, damas y caballeros. Mi nombre es Ivet Romero y vengo de El Salvador. Miss England. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Veronica Cross and I come from Brighton, Sussex. Miss Finland. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ryan Stark and I come from Helsinki. 
Miss France. Miss France. Mesdames et messieurs, bonsoir. Je m'appelle Isabelle Kronaker et je suis de Sarbourg, ville située en Lorraine. Miss Germany. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dagmar Winkler and I come from Nuremberg in Germany. Miss Greece. Καλησπέρα σας. Ονομάζομαι Βάνα Παπαδάκη και εκπροσωπώ την Ελλάδα. Come from Tokyo, Evaristo. Miss Korea. Good evening. My name is Young Ju Kim. I'm from Seoul, Korea, Evaristo. Miss Lebanon. Good evening, Kalispera. My name is Marcel Herro. I am from Lebanon, Beirut, Afaristo Police. Miss Luxembourg. Miss Malaysia. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Magilu, and I come from Kuala Lumpur, the capital of Malaysia. I like very much to welcome you all to Malaysia. Thank you. Miss Malta. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Martha Zweiger, and I come from Sweden. Miss Mexico. Todos, mi nombre es Rosana Villares Moreno, de Mérida, Yucatán, México, hasta Galópolis. Miss New Zealand. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Pamela King, and I'm from Dunedin. Miss Nicaragua. Buenas noches, damas y caballeros. Mi nombre es Ana, y vengo de la ciudad de León. Miss Norway. My name is Aina Valle, and I come from Oslo. Miss Panama. Onomasome Janine Lisuain, Erhome Apoto, Panama, Mujeresi Poli en Elada. Miss 
noches. Mi nombre es Teresita María y vengo de Asunción. Gracias. Miss Philippines voted most photogenic in the pageant. Magandang gabi. Ako po si Margarito Moran, Pagamay Mila. Miss Portugal. Hello, my name is Carla and come from Lisbon. Miss Puerto Rico. Vanessa Colón, and I come from Morocco. Miss Scotland. Good evening, my name is Carol, and I come from Latvia. Miss Singapore. Slava Patan, I'm Deborah D'Souza from the Republic of Singapore. Miss Spain, voted best costume in the pageant. Buenas noches, me llamo María del Rocío y vengo desde Sevilla. Miss Turner. Hello, my name is Ipona and I come from Paramaribo. Miss Sweden. Good evening, my name is Monica Sundin from Stockholm. Miss Switzerland. Barbara Chetli, j'habite à Lausanne, dans le canton de Vaud. Miss Thailand. Good evening. My name is Kinokon Pauma, from Bangkok, Thailand. Miss Trinidad and Tobago. Hello, I'm Pamela King. I come from San Fernando, in Trinidad. Miss Turkey. My name is Hilda Sarhan. My city is Istanbul. Happy New Year, Gazinis. Miss Uruguay. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Yolanda Ferrali. Vengo de Solís, de Mataojo. Gracias. Miss USA. Good evening. My name is Amanda Jones, and I come from Evanston, Illinois, a parista. Miss Venezuela. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Desire Rolando, and I'm from Caracas. Thank you. Miss Virgin Island. Good evening. My name is Cindy Richards, and I come from St. Croix of the U.S. Virgin Islands. Miss Wales. Miss Wales. Hello, my name is Deirdre Greenland and I come from Newport in Monmouthshire. And there they are, the parade of Miss Universe Beauties for 1973. And now, as I said, each year the girls themselves vote the Miss Unity Award and in 1973, the coveted Miss Unity Award goes to Miss Chile. Miss Chile. Congratulations, Miss Chile. And would you tell all of our, just a moment, we'll give her that in just a moment. Would you tell our viewers in the United States your name, please? Janet Rendelin Robertson. And Janet, what would you like to say to the girls who have voted you this high honor? Thank you very, very much. I think that's very appropriate. Now, Miss Hospitality, we will take this beautiful trophy. This is for you, and I want to wish you the very best of luck in all the rest of the days of your life. I hope everything goes as well for you as it has tonight already. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Miss Unity, and thank you, girls. Kalispera, that's fairly close to good evening in Greek. I want to welcome you all to the Miss Universe beauty pageant. And since this is the home of Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty, it seems natural that this is the country where the most beautiful girl in the universe will be selected tonight. I am in the top of this 2,000-year-old amphitheater called the Odeon, or Amphitheater of Herod Atticus. 
And just look at the Parthenon up there. What a sight that is, isn't it marvelous? It's hard to believe that in those seats below me, 2,000 years ago, people sat and watched the plays of Aeschylus, Sophocles, and Euripides. And at that time, 2,000 years ago, those plays were already five centuries old. I'll bet those audiences would have enjoyed our pageant tonight. Be pageants and beautiful girls never go out of style. Now, why don't you join me in seeing if you come up with the same 12 girls the judges will select. It's a spectacle here. And the game photographers from all over the world. <laughs> the first place everyone wanted to visit was the Acropolis, the historic hill on which the most famous monuments in Greek history are located. There's the Propylia, built more than 2,400 years ago. And the Parthenon, probably the world's most famous ancient temple. The Erechtheum, elegant temple of white marble. One day, the girls walked through the placa with its colorful shops on tiny, winding streets. Everyone was looking for souvenirs to take home, of course, and the merchants were delighted to show their wares. In fact, everywhere they went, the girls were greeted by very friendly people. Some of the girls had time to tour Athens' beautiful churches, which really are works of art in themselves, and there were frequent stops at the Peripetira. Oh, well, that's the best I can do. Little corner booths that sell just about everything. Constitution Square is a beautiful open co courtyard in the center of downtown Athens with lovely fountains and flowers, and just across the street from the square is the Parliament building. Unfortunately, the inscriptions proved unreadable to everyone but Miss Grease, and the guard couldn't help because he's not permitted to speak while he's on the job. One of the week's highlights is a trip to the beautiful harbor of Perias, where you can see everything from rowboats to ocean liners. The contestants lunched on local specialties like fried squid, and most of them were at least willing to try it. Then one evening, they were invited to a local festival where they enjoyed some Greek music and even learned some of the folk dances of the country, and that's fun. It was just one more pleasant memory of their happy, exciting visit to Greece. And now let's visit a place of natural beauty with liquid prill. <laughs> a few moments to meet our 12 semi-finalists and have a little chat with them, beginning with Miss India here, whose name is Farzana Habib. Yes. Is that correct? Right. And where do you live? Uh, in New Delhi. And Farzana, speak up good and loud now so everyone can hear you. And tell me, was it quite a thrill to hear your name called first? Oh, yes. It was a big surprise. It was a big yes. surprise, but it was awfully nice to get it all over with so quickly, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> what, what do you do back in India, Farzana? Uh, well, uh, I was lecturing in a college. And at the same time, I've been painting. What sort of painting do you do? Mostly portraits. And what would you like to do in the future? Uh, in the future, in the next five years, I think uh, I'd be terribly satisfied if I do something really worthwhile in art. Well, I think that would be very nice. Now, the girls tell me that you have been reading their palms, that you read palms. Is that right? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I think that our Greek audience would probably be interested in having you read my palm. Would you do that and show them how you do it? Okay, boy. All right. Have a look. Well, do you want the truth and nothing but the truth? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure this is the best idea I ever had. Yes, I want the truth. Um, you've got a very long life, Bob. No worry at all. I don't think you'll be satisfied with one life, so you might be having about seven lives. And, uh, <laughs> well, uh, you've worked very hard. You don't have much of a fate line, but you've come up because of your hard work, perseverance, and uh, you're a famous person, that's obvious, of course. And now let's come down to your affairs, shall we? My what? The most interesting part of your life, yes. your affairs. My affairs? Yes. Yes, okay. that's, and that's what I... <laughs> Thank you, Miss India. Thank you very much. <laughs> Whatever we do, Whatever we do with the rest of these girls, I promise you we won't read palms. Now, Miss Brazil uh, speaks some English. Your name is? Sandra Mara. And you live? In Brazil, of course, in Sao Paulo. In Sao Paulo. And what do you do there? I'm studying medicine. You're studying what kind of medicine? What, do, what kind of doctor do you want to be? Oh, I'm, st I'm in second year of medicine. And I will uh, uh, say 
I'm here from a um, surgeon plastic. A surgeon plastic, a plastic surgeon? Yes. Is what you want to be? I think that's why a plastic surgeon. Right. Why did you choose that? Why? Oh, oh. Uh, I wanted to do faces, legs, <laughs> other things. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Uh, if a 65-year-old lady, for instance, should come to you, could you make her look like you? Oh, if she wants, but I want to do... If she wants to, you could? Oh. I'll bet you have customers right in this audience at this very moment. <laughs> Incidentally, now, in addition to your beautiful face, you have such a lovely figure. What are your uh, vital... St what uh, Sus medidas? I have 19, 16, and 19. 19, 16, 19. Sixty. In the United States, they'll think she's a 12-year-old boy with those numbers. That, those are centimeters. It's uh, about, what, 34, 25, 34? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Miss Brazil. Here you go. Now, Miss Israel speaks English. Yes. And what's your name? Limor Schreibman. And you live in? Excuse me? Yes. Where do you live? In Tel Aviv. And uh, you have just finished high school, and what are your plans for the future? I intend to start studying medicine. Very good. And this is your first trip abroad, I understand. Yes, I've never been abroad. And... Why don't you tell this nice audience what you think of Greece? Oh, to say the truth, I must admit that it has been always my dream to visit Athens because I have studied about Athens and the, his, the gl glorious history of uh, the Greek in high school in history lessons. And well, I, I can and tell they're, they're happy to have you and here. And it is true, really true. And I have heard about the kindness and the hospitality of the people, and I see that it's true. It is true. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Israel, very much. There you go. Now, Miss Columbia is here. This young lady has been studying English for only four months, and you speak enough, though, for me to talk with you. No se tema, no se tema, okay. no se tema con inglés. Uh, your name is? Ana Lucia Agudelo. And where do you live in Colombia? In Cali. And you're a student? I'm a student, chemical engineer. Chemical engineering. And believe it or not, she is an outstanding basketball player. She has, tell me about it. What team do you play on? I'm playing in the Team of Colombia. Of your country? Yes, of my country. And where have you played with this team? When the other girls play me clean, I play clean. When they play clean, but, you play clean? But the other girl playing broker, I... <laughs> <laughs> One of our judges, Walt Frazier, would understand what she's saying now. <laughs> yeah. But what I meant was, where do you play? Uh, in the Pan American Games? Pan American Games, South American Games, uh, Caribbean Games, and Bolivarian Games. That's fine. And Walt, I'll bet you would rather guard, guard her than Jerry West any time, right? Thank you very much, Miss Columbia. Now, Miss Spain here speaks very little English. But we are going to, uh, and I speak very little Spanish. So, uh, in front of a Greek audience, this will be an interesting interview. Uh, ¿Cómo se llama? María del Rocío Martín. María. Uh, ¿Dónde vive? En Sevilla. Sí. Y uh, usted uh, sabe unas palabras en inglés, ¿sí? Yes, I'm what? very, 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 very little. What words do you know? When, <laughs> when you look like that, you don't need to know much English, do you? Well, what, what words do you know in English? Um, <laughs> hungry. Hungry? Help. Help? <laughs> and boys. <laughs> boys? Yes. Not necessarily in that order, though, you understand. <laughs> boys, then help. In su país, in su país, you receive, you state gane, $1,000 for Senorita España, see? Yes. And what did you do with it? ¿Qué hice con su dinero? Ah, primero, bueno, voy a hablar en castellano, perdónenme, pero es que no sé muy bien. El español, el inglés. I asked her what she did with the thousand dollars she won in Spain, and she's telling me in Spanish. Go ahead. Bueno, primero arreglé un poco mi casa, y luego... You what, un poco your casa, what? Sí, la arreglé, estaba un poco deteriorada, y luego lo guardé. She saved it and she improved her home. 
I think. Thank you very much. Now this is Miss Grease and uh, you're Ivana Papadaki. Yes. And you live in Athens. Yes. And you just finished secretarial school. Yes. And there are millions of people watching you at this very moment in the United States. Yeah. If they're not, we're in trouble. And I think there are. So is there a message that you would like to, do you have something you'd like to say to our Americans? Yes. Uh, I send my best uh, greetings from the country from which uh, the Western civilization was born. Well, I think that's very nice, Miss Grease. Now, I want to ask you one more question, if I may. I, I have had the pleasure of vi visiting some Greek restaurants. The food is marvelous, but I've noticed that you Greeks, they throw dishes at the singers and all sorts of things. Now, in the United States, that would be bad. I mean, if you don't like the singer, you might throw something. What does that mean in Greek? Oh, that uh, they enjoy it very much, and uh, they like uh, from uh, the music and the singer. And that's the way they should... In other words, if a singer has a lot of scars, uh, he's a good singer. Yes, of course. I see. Thank you very much, Miss Grease. And there we have our first six semifinals. Well, there they are, the first six semifinalists. And I hope you've had a chance to learn something about them that will help you choose the winner. The Greeks have always had a fine eye for form, and awards for beauty were made even in ancient times. Aristotle said, beauty is the gift of God. And in ancient Greece, the winner of a beauty contest might have received no more than a, than a simple crown made from the branches of an olive tree. Well, all things change, especially prizes for beauty. Tonight, the girl who wins the title of Miss Universe will receive a $10,000 cash prize, a $10,000 international personal appearance contract, and more gifts than you can imagine. In addition, that lucky lady will spend a year she'll never forget traveling the world over. Not bad for a girl who, like a lot of us, might have been a tomboy, maybe even a bold one. Watch. And now let's meet our next six semifinalists. Miss Argentina here. Como se llama? Susana Romero. Susana Romero and donde vive? In Buenos Aires. In Buenos Aires. Now, she's just finished high school. She knows almost no English. Uh, let, just tell me, what words do you know in English? Um, brother, mother, father, um, peace, love, uh, fraternity. One, two, three, four, five. That's enough. <laughs> Very good. You've learned a lot here, Miss Argentina. Thank you very much. Very sweet. Miss Philippines does know English, and uh, your name is? Margarita Moran. And what would you like to do, Margarita? Later? Yes, as a job. Uh, I'd like to be a banker. A banker? Why a banker? Well, uh, first, I'd like to follow my father's footsteps because he's a banker. And uh, besides that, I'm taking up a course in business administration, which is courses in uh, banking and finance. And I like counting money. You like counting money? What would you do with the $10,000 if you win in the Miss Universe badge? Uh, I'd invest it. Um, probably I'll build up a hotel. A hotel? Yes, and I'll run a business, and my sister will manage it, because she's taking up business at, uh, hotel management in school. You know, I think I've made a discovery. This girl could be the Onassis of the Philippines before she's through. Thank you very much, Miss Philippines. Yes. Now, here is uh, Miss USA. Habla Espanol. <laughs> Obviously, some Americans in the audience. Hablo español? Sí, hablo español perfectamente, señor. <laughs> you really do. Sí. Where... <laughs> Amanda Jones, where did you learn Spanish? In school, a long time ago. But I've learned quite a bit here. I'll, I'll bet you have. Now, you've been Miss USA since May. And what? how has it changed your life? Well, I have some good news, and I think I have some bad news. Well, give me both. The good news is that I've seen so many places and met so many people, and I'm more convinced than ever that you don't need language to communicate. 
And the bad news is that the night after I won the USA title, I was taken out for dinner, and they gave the bottle of champagne to the wrong girl. Oh, my. Well, let's hope that that doesn't happen, doesn't happen again in case you become Miss Universe. Thank you, Miss USA. Now, this young lady... This young lady speaks no English at all. And all I know in Japanese, I shall now say, Sukiyaki? Yes. <laughs> what, what, your name? My name is Miyoko Sometani. Miyoko? Yes. Miyoko. Yes. And Miyoko, the only thing that I know to talk with her about, I know that when she arrived, her hair was long, and I'm going to try to get her to tell me about that. Your hair, your hair was long? Yes. Tell me in Japanese about that. <laughs> You about your hair? Yes. Um, Greece is too hot. <laughs> so I cut my hair. She knows more English than I realize. Yeah. Do you like it? Yes, I like your hair. It's very nice. Very nice. Sayonara. Thank you. Miss Lebanon here is Marcel Ero. Hero. Hero. From Beirut. From Beirut. And uh, I understand from some of the girls that you've been doing a lot of dancing. What yes. kind of dancing have you done? Lebanese folk dance. Lebanese? Oriental, yes. Yes. And uh, you danced at the wine tasting uh, party yes. you had? Yes. Yes. Have you taught some of the girls dances? Yes. Have you? Good for you, Thank Ms. you. Lebanon. What would... Yes? I don't to told you to show you how I dance. You will? All right. Take a moment. Uh, go ahead. What do you want to show me? I dance like this in Lebanon. We dance. <laughs> And I I'm think perhaps you've shown us enough, Miss Lennon. <laughs> no, what do you... I'm going to show you how we dance. Oh, you want me to see? Yes. All right. How do we do? Put your left leg from... You right me up and go back. Watch One. the orchestra fit back there. <laughs> One and two and three and four. Five and six and seven. Seven, five and six. Thank you, Roger. In front of Ginger Rogers, I go through that. Fred Astaire, I'm not, Ginger. Thank you very much, Miss Lebanon. Thank you for the lecture. <laughs> now, Miss Norway, what is your name? My name is Aina Valle. Your name, first name is? Aina. Aina. And you were born in Africa? Yes. Tell me about that. Why were you born in Africa? Because my mother and father were missionaries there. And uh, how long did you live there? I lived there for 13 years, and I really enjoyed it. How was life in Africa? It was free. We were playing football and climbing in the tree and haunting for monkeys and... Haunting for monkeys? Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like fun. And it must have been a happy childhood for you to end up looking so pretty at your age now. Thank you very much, Miss Norway. And ladies and gentlemen, there are our 12 beautiful semi-finalists in the Miss Universe pageant of 1973. <laughs> Carrie Wells from Australia. Carrie, tell us about some of the year's highlights for you. Well, for one thing, I think I'm the only Miss Universe to ever be kissed by 108 boys in one day. It's true. I visited an orphanage in Colombia called Mikasa, and I met 108 beautiful little boys between the ages of 6 and 16, and they all wanted to kiss Miss Universe. In return, they taught me to dance their native dance, the Kumbia. That'll be a day you'll never forget, I bet you. Right. There were so many things. I've been to 13 states in the United States, as well as Nicaragua, Colombia, Venezuela, and Mexico. I even climbed the pyramids in Mexico and went parasailing in Acapulco. Well, you look much thinner. Have you been working too hard or was it the parasailing? <laughs> no, but I have lost over 20 pounds. Mm. I eat only natural foods now, like fruits and vegetables. Someone once said, let your foods be your medicines and your medicines be your foods. I've been following that advice and I've never felt better. In fact, one of my ambitions is to have my own television show in America, which would incorporate beauty and health of body and mind. But does that mean Australia will be losing you? Well, I'm moving to New York, but I'll always go home as often as possible. Australia's a beautiful country, wonderful people and very little pressure. For me, it'll always be home. Well, thank you, Carrie. I agree with you, too. You've been a lovely thing in this universe, really. In a minute, we'll return to the business of selecting your successor, and I know you're interested... Now let's hear about a new antiperspirant spray called Sure.
Miss Universe Beauty Pageant will continue immediately after station identification. The Miss Universe Pageant is coming to you tonight from a land that has played a very important part in the history of Western civilization where more than 2,000 years ago, the age of Pericles brought to a climax the glory of ancient Greece. And we thought you might be interested to see this map with which I would like to show you just where we are uh, here at the Acropolis. Now, this is the entire Acropolis here. We're at the Herod Atticus Theater, which you see right down here. And these boxes in the top of the theater here were covered at one time. These are the seats that are at the top of this theater we're in right now, and they were covered at one time. As a matter of fact, the stage I'm standing on right now was also covered. Now over here is the theater of Dionysus, and there is nothing happening there now. There are ruins there, and you, you can see what the theater once looked like, but nothing happens there. There's an underground passageway here that joins the two theaters, and they have all sorts of events here at the Herod Atticus Theater where we are. As a matter of fact, an American ballet company was here for three or four nights just for the whole family to play at home. So you be ready to start making your list after this brief message about Jif peanut butter. <laughs> Contestants have been rehearsing very hard all week for tonight's show, but there's been time for a good deal of fun here in Athens, too. And since it's perfect swimsuit weather at this time of the year, we took advantage of the climate to bring you a very special feature of the pageant. Later in the show, our 12 semi-finalists will participate in the official swimsuit competition. But earlier in the week, during a boat trip around the beautiful Greek islands, we taped this year's delegates in their Catalina swimsuits, and I know you are going to enjoy it. Here they are the Miss Universe Beauty Delegates for 1973 on a swimsuit holiday. On the good ship Jupiter and the beautiful blue waters of the Aegean Sea in the background, here are the girls from Europe. First, Miss Belgium. This is Miss Cyprus. Miss Denmark. Miss Finland. Miss France. Miss Holland, Miss Ireland. Yeah, Mel. Miss Italy. Miss Luxembourg. Miss Norway. Miss Portugal. Miss Spain. Miss Sweden. Miss Wales. And here 
With the island of Hydra in the background are the South American contestants. Miss Argentina. Miss Bolivia. Miss Brazil. Miss Chile. She just became Miss Unity. Miss Colombia. Miss Paraguay. Miss Suriname. Miss Uruguay. And Miss Venezuela. From the Caribbean Islands, Miss Aruba. Miss Bermuda. Miss Curacao. Miss Jamaica. Miss Puerto Rico. Miss Trinidad and Tobago. Miss Virgin Islands. And now, from North America. Miss Canada. Miss Mexico. Miss USA. <laughs> Central America sends us Miss Costa Rica. Miss El Salvador. Miss Honduras. Miss Nicaragua. Miss Panama. and the Pacific Islands, we have first Miss Australia. And now, Miss Ceylon. This is Miss Guam. Miss Hong Kong.
Miss India. Miss Japan. Miss Korea. Miss Lebanon. Miss Malaysia. Miss Malta. Miss New Zealand. Miss Philippines. Miss Singapore. Miss Thailand. And Miss Turkey. There you are with our friendly Captain Kouros, the Miss Universe Beauty Delegates for 1973. during the day here, so we rehearsed the show at night. That gave the girls time to get acquainted with the city during the day. Languages were less of a barrier than they expected. Most of the girls speak at least a few words of English, and when one had a problem, there was usually another girl around to help out. And more help came from the tourist guides who handle the special problems of foreigners and wear little flags on their jackets identifying the country whose language they speak. When a hungry young lady, for example, speaks only Chinese, is looking for a Greek restaurant or an American hairspray, that kind of help is invaluable. Athens is a beautiful city with a population of over two million people. And all two million of them seem to drive home from work at exactly the same time. So it's a miracle everyone showed up for rehearsal the same day, all the time, but they did. And what we all rehearsed will continue after we turn our attention to your hands word from Ivory Liquid. Now, in just a moment, we're going to announce the names of the 12 Miss Universe delegates who have been chosen as semi-finalists by our judges. But first, I'd like to have you meet the ladies and gentlemen whose job it is to select Miss Universe for 1973. And I must say that this year, our panel of judges is as international as it is distinguished. The first of our judges is El Cordobes, the world's number one Spanish matador. Ole, Jean-Pierre Amon popular French stage and screen actor and playwright. <laughs> Horst Buchholz, German-born star of Broadway, Hollywood, and television. <laughs> Apasra Hansakula, Miss Universe of 1965. Ani Mori, the world-renowned fashion designer from Japan. <laughs> Lynn Redgrave, British stage and screen star and a favorite throughout the world. <laughs> Edilson Cid Varela, outstanding newspaper and television executive from Brazil. Uh, 
Anderson, Publishers Hall syndicate columnist and author. Walt Frazier, star of the world champion New York Knicks. Iraklis Mathiopoulos, chairman of the Chamber of Hotels of Greece. And Ginger Rogers, one of the world's all-time favorite film stage and television stars. Thank you so much, judges. And now it's time to learn which 12 lucky young ladies will go on to compete as semi-finalists on the way to the Miss Universe title. The judges you have just met have had an opportunity to meet each of the girls individually. Their secret ballots have been tabulated. But before we learn who the semi-finalists are, let's welcome back all 61 delegates. Here they are. <laughs> Because of the secret voting system, neither the girls nor I know the names of these semi-finalists. Not even the judges themselves know which 12 girls they've chosen collectively, but the 12 names are on this card, prepared by the accounting firm of Ernst & Ernst, and I'm going to announce them for you right now for the very first time. And before I begin, girls, let me just say you have been a joy to work with, all of you, and I wish all 61 of you the very best of luck. All right, ladies and gentlemen. The very first name among our 12 semi-finalists is Miss India. Our second semi-finalist is Miss Argentina. We go Latin for number three. Number three is Miss Brazil. Here are three of the girls who have a chance to become Miss Universe of 1973. The fourth girl to be, the fourth name on the list is Miss Philippines. And now, Miss Israel. Just one more name and we're halfway through the list. At the halfway point, we find the name Miss USA. We have six of our semi-finalists for you now. We have six for you. We have six more to go. One of those second six is Miss Columbia. The next name on our list of 12 semi-finalists, 12 girls, who will go on and compete throughout the evening for the title of Miss Universe of 1973. That girl is Miss Japan. Here are eight of our girls. We have four more names on this card to announce. One of those four is Miss Spain. I'm sure that back in the United States, our television viewers heard our Greek audience's reaction to this girl, and I think our Greek audience will react again. Here is Miss Lebanon.
Yes, we have 10 beautiful girls here. 10 beautiful girls who will be vying for the title of Miss Universe of 1973. But to join these 10 girls now, we have Miss Greece. Somehow, I, I do believe you're pleased with that announcement. We have 11 girls now. One more girl, one more girl in this group who has a chance to become Miss Universe. That last name on the list is Miss Norway. There they are, our 12 semi-finalists in the Miss Universe beauty pageant for 1973. Now here's a short film of their spare time adventures in Greece. All the contestants arrived in Athens 10 days ago. And they got a warm welcome from the citizens of Athens and from dozens of... Before we did their show, or before we started our show tonight, our rehearsals and so on. Now up here is the Acropolis, and this is the Parthenon, which has been described as probably the most perfect building ever built by man. And this is the gate to the Acropolis, the entrance here. And up here, there were places of worship, and there were uh, military headquarters and all sorts of things. It was walled, of course. And all around up here are points of tremendous interest. And we had the pleasure of being guided around this area. And uh, you can see the Parthenon, perhaps if we have not, I don't have a monitor here, we may have taken a shot of it, but we're at the foot of the Acropolis, and the Parthenon is right above us there. And at night, it's lighted, and it's a beautiful sight to see over the city of Athens. And uh, I was just uh, mentioning that we have had a tour up here with a Greek guide, and it is one of the most uh, impressive things that ever happened in my life. And I hope that you one day have an opportunity to visit Athens, Greece yourself. And I'm sure that a visit to the Acropolis will be high on your agenda. It's something that you will remember all the rest of your days. I've learned to sing good evening in Greek. But trying to learn in all the languages our international delegates speak is just more than I can handle. Of our 61 contestants, 23 speak Spanish, 3 Dutch, 10 French, and 3 Portuguese. Now imagine how complicated it is to explain to all these girls a simple thing like what a drachma is, for example. For your information, drachmas are the Greek currency. There are 30 drachmas to the dollar and 100 leptas to the drachma. And try making that clear in Portuguese. It only costs about 30 drachmas to go from one end of the city to the other by taxi, and that's through traffic that makes Fifth Avenue look like a meadow in comparison. Well, in just a moment, we'll see our 12 semifinalists in the swimsuit competition, and I know that none of you will want to miss that. Until then, let's hear about some, so, from, some folks who feel that there's no place like a home that uses downy fabric softener. That's true delegates in their swimsuits. Now it's time for our 12 semi-finalists to model in swimsuits once more for the judges. To be absolutely fair, I'm going to ask you not to applaud until all of the girls have passed the judges. This is one of the most important elements of the pageant, so judges, get ready to mark your ballots very carefully, please. And let's greet our 12 semi-finalists in the Miss Universe swimsuit competition for 1973. Miss India. Sandy. Rosanna Habib. She's five feet six inches tall, weighs 100. Miss Argentina. Pounds. 
Susanna Romero. She has black hair, brown eyes. She's five feet seven inches tall and weighs 117 pounds. And she's 20 years old and from Buenos Aires. Miss Brazil. Sandra Maria Ferreria. She's from Sao Paulo. She's 21 years old, five feet seven inches tall, weighs 122 pounds. Lovely brown hair and brown eyes. Miss Philippines. Maria Margarita Moran. She has dark brown hair and dark brown eyes. Five feet six inches tall and weighs 116 pounds. 19 years old. Miss Israel. She's from, I think Mandaluyan. Lee Morris Schreibman. She has brown hair and green brown eyes. Five feet six inches tall and weighs 115 pounds. 19 years old from Tel Aviv. Miss USA. Amanda Jones. Brown hair, green brown eyes again. Five feet eight and a half inches tall. 125 pounds. 23 years old. And from Evanston, Illinois. Miss Columbia. Ana Lucia Agudelo, five feet seven inches tall, 132 pounds. Brunette, with dark eyes, 19 years old from Cali. Miss Japan. Miyoko Sumitani, black hair, black eyes, five feet six inches tall and 121 pounds. 22 years old. She's from, I think, Ibiagi, I I I Ken. <laughs> Miss Spain. Maria del Rocio Martin from Sevilla. 19 years old, 5 feet 6 inches tall, weighs 114 pounds, has blonde hair and blue eyes. Miss Lebanon. Marcel Hedo. Auburn hair, hazel eyes, 5 feet 7 inches tall, 118 pounds, 21 years old, and from Beirut. Miss Greece. Vanya Papadaka, 5 feet 7 inches tall, 120 pounds, with black hair, lovely black eyes, 19 years old, and from Athens. Miss Norway. Anyavala, red brown hair, blue green eyes, what a combination. Five feet, five inches tall, 115 pounds, 20 years old, and from Oslo. And there you have the 1973 Miss Universe Swimsuit Competition. While our lovely delegates are getting ready for a musical number, I'm going to chat with another international beauty, Luciana Avedon, the former Princess Pignatelli. Hello, Luciana. Tell me, what do you think of the girls this year? The girls are just as beautiful as ever, but it's incredible how these ancient walls emphasize their youth and energy. I don't remember ever seeing a more beautiful setting, do you? It's only natural. Athens, as you know, has always been a city partial to beautiful women. Mythology has it that in the beginning, the patronage of the city was vied for by Poseidon, a god, and Athena, a goddess. There was a competition, and the goddess Athena won. And that's how the city was named. Athena? Athens? Oh, I get it. That makes sense. Tell us more. The book also tells about a great statue of Athena that stood up there in, on the Acropolis. It was made of special metal and gems, and it was said that the sun reflecting from the statue could be seen for hundreds of miles. And you like that best, I bet. <laughs> and now the signal reflecting from our microwave disks and the satellite can be seen around the world by millions of people. Do you know that? 
I find that almost unbelievable, but you know, I really, I like the idea of the sun and the gems much uh, better. I knew it. I knew you would. Yours are beautiful, too. I'm glad that I don't have to make that choice. I'm so happy you could be with us, Luciana. Thank you very much. I'm so happy, too. It's been a wonderful evening. Hasn't though, so, yes, and it still is, yes. <laughs> well, now, we'll take a short pause to watch what happens when a bride fries chicken in Crisco oil. Each year, it's a pleasure for all of us associated with the pageant to welcome back several past winners of the Miss Universe crown. Tonight, you've met Carrie Ann Wells, our reigning Miss Universe, and Apostra Hansakula, Miss Universe of 1965, who's one of our judges tonight. There are four more former title holders with us, and I'd like to introduce them to you right now. First, Miss Universe of 1964, Corinna Sopay Zaks of Greece. Next, Miss Universe of 1966, Margareta Arvidsson Stupakov of Sweden. Now, Miss Universe of 1970, Marisol Malaret of Puerto Rico. And Miss Universe of 1971, Georgina Risk of Lebanon. Thank you very much, girls. It's always a treat to see you again. Now, music is the international language that all of the girls enjoy. Whether a song comes from a South American country, from the Orient, from Europe, wherever it originates, it serves to bring the singers closer together. Tonight, the Miss Universe contestants have a medley of friendship songs for you. Although some of the girls had to learn the English lyrics phonetically, they know what the songs mean, and that's what counts. So while our 12 semifinalists are getting ready for the evening gown competition, here's our own maestro, Bernie Green, conducting the Miss Universe Medley of Friendship. <laughs>
plans to visit the city, you have to plan to change your clocks and your lifestyle. They say the ancient gods drank nectar and spent their days on Mount Olympus. Well, modern Greeks drink uzu and spend a good part of their days taking a siesta. I found out about this custom on an afternoon shopping spree. Everyone was asleep. Shops and shutters were closed and the streets were deserted. And this happens every day after lunch and then about 5.30 in the afternoon, the city wakes up and it's business as usual. Many Athenians are up until 2 or 3 in the morning, eating, socializing, sipping coffee at the tavernas, or just strolling through the streets. The Greek people seem to have more leisure time than we do, but that's only because they break their days into smaller pieces. Actually, they work more and sleep less. Well, it's a neat trick if you can live through it. And now it's just about time for the evening gown competition. You know, people have changed since the first Miss Universe, and now cheers, all temperature cheer. If a girl is beautiful, somehow she's even more beautiful in an evening gown, and we're about to prove the point by introducing our 12 semi-finalists in the final phase of judging before the selection of the five finalists. The evening gown competition is particularly interesting because each of the contestants chooses her own gown. So the judges can learn something about the individual personality of each delegate while they make notes on her poise and her appearance. Now, judges, we introduce the 1973 Miss Universe evening gown competition. Miss India. Miss Argentina. Miss Brazil. Miss Philippines. Miss Israel. Miss Japan. Miss Spain. competition.
finalists in swimsuit and gown. And from their talks with Bob, you've had a glimpse of, of their personalities, I'm sure. Now it's time to put the names of your five favorites on the list, as I've done. And later on, the whole family can check to see who came closest to matching the judges' selections. Socrates said, four things are the duty of a judge. To hear courteously, to answer wisely, to consider soberly, and to decide impartially. But it's difficult to decide impartially between so many beautiful girls, isn't it? Also different, yet each a true beauty. I'll bet it, even old good old Socrates would have had his problems tonight with these girls. In ancient Greece, we might have gone to the Oracle of Delphi, where the priestess Pythia would answer the questions of the future with a riddle. Tonight, to find out who will be our future Miss our future Miss Universe instead of a riddle, we'll just have to wait and see. But while we do, here are some notes about complexion care from Came. Judges. The judges have had a chance to see our 12 semi-finalists in swimsuits and in evening gowns, and now it's their job to narrow the competition from 12 girls to 5. So we're going to give the judges one last chance for a close-up review of the candidates. You, too, might want to make a note of the five girls you think should go on to become finalists tonight. Here they are once more, our 12 semi-finalists for 1973. Miss India. Miss Argentina. Miss Brazil. Miss Philippines. Miss Israel. <laughs> Miss USA. <laughs> Miss Colombia. Miss Japan. Miss Spain. Miss Lebanon. Miss Greece. <laughs> Miss Norway. And there they are, awaiting the judges' decisions, our Miss Universe candidates for 1973. <laughs> on the stage of this ancient theater, the Odeon of Herod Atticus has been a terrific experience for the girls. Echoes of the past are everywhere. In ancient days, the Greek theater was the people's greatest interest. Playwrights like Aeschylus and Sophocles gave the world its first great written tragedies, and Aristophanes the first great comedies. Their plays were about the epic heroes of the Homeric myths and the fates dealt them by the gods of Mount Olympus. And some of these classics are still being performed today on television. Now you just think, this amphitheater holds about 5,000 people. It would have to be filled every night of the year for about 1,000 years to equal our TV audience this evening. The Miss Universe pageant has an estimated audience of more than 60 million viewers in the United States alone. 
We're also seen on tape and film in 40 countries and live by satellite and radio to many other countries. Altogether, 500 million people will be watching The Girl Who Becomes Miss Universe tonight. And now, it's almost time to find out who she is. But first... The second most exciting moment of this evening has arrived. Our judges have chosen the five finalists who will go on to compete for the Miss Universe title. The ballots have been marked. Our accountants have tabulated them, and they have compiled a list of five lucky delegates. Now, may I have that list, please, Miss Hospitality? Thank you. These are the five girls who will go on to compete for the title of Miss Universe. The first of our five finalists is Miss USA. <laughs> Miss USA is one of the five finalists. The second girl is a girl who's been one of your favorites all evening long. She is Miss Philippines. <laughs> the next young lady is a young lady for whom you've applauded more each time you've seen her. She is Miss Norway. <laughs> Our fourth finalist is Miss Israel. Here we have four of our five finalists. One more of the 12 semi-finalists. One more girl for this pedestal right here. Ladies and gentlemen, that girl is Miss Spain. Congratulations, finalists. We have now reached the final phase of tonight's competition. A chance for our judges to watch all of our Miss Universe finalists in an informal answer and question situation. Now, each of these five finalists will be asked a question of general interest. We are not trying to test their knowledge. We are not trying to test their education. We only want to give the judges one last chance to review their impressions and refresh their memories of last week's interviews. Now, we have interpreters standing by so that each girl may answer the question in her own language if she wishes, and the answer will be translated for us. Now, I have five questions here, and each girl will choose a question, and then we'll listen to her impromptu answer, and we're going to start with you, Miss Spain. Step right down here, Miss Spain, please. Here. And may I have the Spanish interpreter, please? Now, Miss Spain, would you select one of these questions? Just take one. Very good. Now, would you come up here with me, please? The question that I want Miss Spain to answer is this. If your little sister or a friend were to enter this pageant next year, what advice would you give them? Please. Yes. Sí, le aconsejaría porque vale la pena nada más que por tratar con tantas niñas de diversos países, de tantas nacionalidades distintas, convivir y saber más o menos el modo de pensar de cada una. Además, una experiencia muy importante y que todas chicas debería de tener, pero solamente se le dan a privilegiada y hay que dar siempre las gracias. Yes, now would you please tell us just briefly what did she say? She says uh, she will advise her sister to come in because it was a very good experience. Uh, not only because uh, they are girls uh, from every country, it, uh, it will be a very good enriched experience for any woman in the world. Very good. Thank you very much, and thank you, Miss Spain. Now, Miss Israel, would you please step down here? Take one of the questions. 
Your question is this. If you had to stop being you and become somebody else, who would you want to be and why? Uh, to expand in Hebrew. In Hebrew? Yes. May I have the Hebrew interpreter, please? All right, while they get someone who speaks Hebrew, will you please step back up there? Would you step down here, Miss Norway? Take one of these three questions. Your question is, you've had a chance to see how the people of Athens live. How does it differ from the way people live in your hometown? Oh, that was a difficult question, I think. People here is uh, very warm, and um, uh, they're looking at in the, on each other, and they uh, don't care to talk with strange people on the street. In Norway, we doesn't do that. And um, that's... Uh, mm. Oh, it's difficult to answer it. I get the impression, though, that they are more friendly and warm. More impulsive, yes. And, and display their emotions. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Miss Norway, very much. <laughs> now, Miss USA, would you please step down here? Take one of these two questions. And your question is, you've been away from home for about 10 days. What is the first thing you're going to do when you get home, and why? Many people will ask me the first thing, how is Greece? What is it like to be home? The people in this country have made me feel so at home that all I can do is take them back with me, and that's what I'm going to tell my folks when I get home. Very nice. Miss USA. Now, Miss Philippines, this is the remaining question. This question is for you. Your question is, let's make believe that all of a sudden, this is a perfect question for her. Let's make believe that all of a sudden you had a million dollars. <laughs> What's the first thing you would buy and why would you buy it? A house and lot. Because <laughs> it's the most expensive thing and I can't afford it. So if I had a million bucks, I'll buy a house and lot and live by myself <laughs> and other people, of course. Thank you very much, Miss Philippines. Now, Miss Israel, would you step right down here? Now. Your question, and uh, this lady speaks Hebrew, would you step over here on my left, please? And uh, her question was... If you had to become... Stop being you, and become somebody else, who would you want to be, and why? May I ask? I understand now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your tremendous contribution <laughs> to this show. I think I want to be a great scientist which, because I think that science is the most important fact, uh, value in our lives. But the uh, instructive science, not the destructive science for war purposes, for instance. So science helps humanity and this is my aim in life. Thank you, Miss Israel. Judges, you've heard our five finalists. We await your decision. Who will be Miss Universe for 1973? Now, while the judges are busy marking their most important ballots of this evening, I'd like to introduce the reigning Miss Universe for her traditional walk and words of farewell. Let's welcome Miss Universe of 1972. Here is Carrie Ann Wells of Australia. As my year as Miss Universe ends, I would like to thank the people of the world for teaching me that we are all one people, capable of living happily together in the light of evolutionary progress and universal love. To Miss Universe 1973 and her 60 beautiful runners, I wish success and happiness, and remind them that the beauty of the body in time gives way to the eternal beauty of the soul. And my Greek friends,
close to that big moment. I hope you've all written down your choices for the four runners up and the girl you think will be Miss Universe. With the crowning of that lucky young lady will come the end of our visit to Athens. I found it, it's a warm city and so are the Athenians. The ancient traditions of hospitality are observed here to the fullest. I also found out that it's best not to argue with the generosity of your Greek host if you're lucky enough to have one, because it's a matter of honor that he pays the check. It's a city filled with color, sounds, and aromas, like the smoke from the Soblakia stands and the chestnut vendors. And I know I'll remember the music of the Bazookia songs drifting out of the tavernas, and of course, the magnificent Acropolis. For the girl who will be crowned in just a moment, this is just the beginning. And now it's time to find out who she is. First, though, a word about an antiperspirant made especially for women. Now, our judges are marking their ballots, making the final selection, naming the four runners-up in Miss Universe of 1973. I'll have it in just a moment. Walt Frazier, I mentioned you earlier. Would you step right out here, please? Walt is one of our judges, and... <laughs> awfully nice to have you with us again. Just turn around so people back home can see you. Were you a little surprised at that wonderful outburst of applause when I announced your name? Did you know there were this many basketball fans in Greece? Uh, I was somewhat surprised, but most of them I paid to cheer for me. <laughs> well, there are some American sailors up there, and there are some Americans in the audience, but a lot of the Greeks apparently enjoy basketball, and I know you must enjoy this position of judge of the Miss Universe pageant, don't you? Yes, for two reasons. One, uh, I'd heard a lot about Greece, and being here is everything that I heard that it was. It's a very beautiful country, and the people have been very nice. And two, I like to meet women, <laughs> especially, uh, uh, you know, the girls were very pretty, but more than that, I really enjoyed the parts uh, where we interviewed them because uh, different girls from different countries have different mannerisms, and uh, it's been a great experience. Well, were you surprised at how really intelligent most of these girls are? Uh, yes, and uh, I think the thing that really surprised me is the poise that each girl has, because they, they're very young girls, but they display a lot of poise for their age. They certainly do. Thank you very much, Walt Frazier. And now, would you give me those five names, please? We have the five names here. And as I said, this is the most important announcement of the evening. This is the announcement we've been waiting for all evening long. We have our four runners-up, and we have Miss Universe of 1973. And I will begin with the runners-up. Good luck to all of you. They're not in alphabetical order. The fourth runner-up for the title of Miss Universe is Miss Israel. <laughs> the third runner-up. The third runner-up is Miss Spain. Miss Spain. <laughs> The second runner-up is Miss Norway. Would you step down here, please, Miss Philippines? Now, one of you will become Miss Universe of 1973. The other is the first runner-up. And the position of first runner-up is very important because if for any reason Miss Universe could not fulfill her responsibilities, the first runner-up would be Miss Universe. Now, girls, the first runner-up is Miss USA, Miss Philippines, is Miss Universe. of 1973. There she is. We, the young women of the universe, believe people everywhere are seeking peace, tolerance, and mutual understanding. We pledge to spread this message in every way we can, wherever we go. Maria Margarita Moran is a student at a 
model, sophomore taking vacation. She'd like to act. She comes from a big family, two girls, six boys. She's terribly photogenic. I, I know we all know that. She didn't have her brothers and her what she did because she was Miss Universe good. and this wonderful audience here in Athens, Greece. Bob Barker thanking you for joining us on television in the United States. Good night, everyone. Beautiful complexion. And to buy lemon fresh joy for beautiful dishes.